So I've been making a board game. But the other day when I was walking my dog, I thought to myself, hey, I could turn this board game into a video game. But wait, this isn't my dog. I don't own a dog. Hi, my name's Gab, and I've been making a board game with my husband, which we've named Gathering Grounds. A board game where players must forage, scavenge, and craft items in order to survive. Its whole premise is inspired by a simple idea. When picking a berry or leaf or mushroom out in the wild, do you really know what you're eating? The development and testing of this tabletop game has been going really well, which I've shared a bit here on my channel. And we currently are on our fifth version of the prototype. But as a game developer, I couldn't help but wondering, could this idea also work as a video game? So I got to testing that theory. Opening up my laptop, I downloaded Unity, deciding that I would try to start with making something simple in 2D. But first things first, I needed a character, someone that I could move around and control, which led to the creation of this guy. For the board game, we are playing around with the idea that the players are aliens, foraging and sabotaging each other on unknown planets. So who better to recreate in pixel art form than one of these aliens? Vitruvius. I decided to give all the aliens names similar to Greek or Roman philosophers because, well, I don't really have an answer to that. Other than this cute little alien, obviously having the perfect proportions like the Vitruvian man. So thus, Vitruvius was reborn into pixel art form, which I drew using an app called Piskel, an app that I actually used for the first ever video game that I worked on whilst I was studying, Spud vs. The World. But we won't get too deep into that game today. Bringing Vitruvius into the project and giving him a simple little idol animation, I started working on getting him moving before being brought to a halt as I encountered Unity's new input system. So after spending a bit of time getting myself up to speed on that, I got this alien moving in a blank scene. Setting this up in a way so that the player is made up of a selection of managers, to control specific logic, I would no doubt be building on top of the player later. As along with a movement manager, I know that I needed a hunger manager, a health manager, an interaction manager, an inventory manager, and probably many more. In Gathering Grounds, the board game, players forage for food and must eat that food that they foraged as they take actions in the game to replenish their hunger, as their hunger is their currency for taking those actions. And if that hunger level depletes, then the player must spend health in its place, reaching a health of zero, eliminating them from the game. And the eating is where the design of this game all began. Currently, there are four types of food in the game, fruits, veggies, roots, and fungi. And say this player has foraged a fruit and a root, and they choose to eat the fruit. In the board game, they then must roll to see what effect the fruit will have on them. Yes, eating doesn't always guarantee your survival. There is a level of risk involved when taking this action. And so this is the first mechanic that I wanted to focus on when building the virtual version of the game. Creating foods that each have their own level of randomized risk when it comes to eating it. Spawning with randomized data, totally unknown to the player until they tried to eat it. But Vitruvius was in an empty world. I felt bad for the little guy. So the next thing for me to do was to make him a map to walk around in. I achieved this by using Unity's inbuilt tile map tools. But of course, I couldn't just slap in some tiles and call it a day. I wanted the world to look somewhat appealing for my little alien friend here, as I also had this idea to randomize the colors of the tiles being loaded in, to create the beginnings of randomized unknown planets that the player could load into. But with my first attempt, this was a bit of a flop. So instead, I found another approach. Instead of using a selection of tiles that I would then need to worry about seamlessly connecting together, I found this shader by Jess Coates that applies a texture as an overlay to your tiles, so I went ahead and recolored this, and with using random colors, was able to start creating some diversity to the world Vitruvius would load into, which I'll link that video down below for anyone wanting to check it out as well. I then spent a bit of time adding settings to make the world generation more expandable for the future, such as adding height and width values that could be set on the tile manager to create worlds of different sizes, setting up the ability to use different materials for the shader to create worlds with different biomes, of course, with more ideas to come. And for the most part, other than the edges of the map, it was all looking pretty good. With that out of the way and Vitruvius, I'm sure, 
a lot happier, I carried on setting up the foods. Starting with the fruits. Recreating the one that we are using as our current standard art for the board game into pixel art, just like I did with Vitruvius. My starting goal with the food was to create a generic base class with base data that the unique types can then inherit from, to be able to implement any of their own unique logic if necessary on top of the functionality that they would all share, one of these being a hunger range. As remember, eating doesn't guarantee survival. And after incorporating a simple interaction system with the input system, along with some simple detection logic, I had fruits and veggies spawning in, dealing random hunger to the player. Which I linked up through some very simple UI that I quickly created as well to reflect this. Now, each and every one of these food items that I had spawning in on the tiles had its own unique data, which works great in the board game. Each time you eat a food needing to roll to see how it will affect you being exciting and suspenseful, before a video game, I thought that it might be better if the player could collect a number of the same fruits, roots, veggies, fungi, on a planet they're exploring, so that once they try it, they can collect more of it. Knowing whether it's safe to eat or dangerous to eat, with the hopes that this could add some more longevity to the game and some interesting mechanics to build on in the future. So when adding the other types of foods, I got to refactoring the food scripts to do just this by using scripts for objects. These scriptable objects being able to determine the max different number of these food collections to spawn into a world, the percentage chance of food actually spawning on a tile, as I also made some cute flowers to test out foliage in the game to spawn in, and also allowing to store a list of different food varieties. So, going back to Piskel, I got to creating some of these variations, creating separate body and top sprites that could be interchanged to make food look unique each time along with then applying the same random color logic to food as I could to the world. The way that the original food items that I created were spawning in was a bit crazy though. So I went ahead and created some more sprites for bushes and dirt, which could act as harvestable prefabs, allowing for the world to seem a bit more real and the act of foraging a bit more immersive rather than just seeing giant veggies and fruits everywhere. And after coding a simple pop-out animation, things were starting to come together. But what good is being able to interact with these food items if the player can't even pick them up? Which meant one thing. Next to tackle would have to be an inventory system. Starting off with something simple, I set up events to send through to the inventory manager on the player when a food has been collected. Similar to the events I initially set up to tell the hunger manager that a food had been consumed. Coding the ability to send the food data set on the collected food in order to store that information for other systems to read and share. And after putting together this beautiful UI, I successfully had the food displaying in collections, lumping together with the other food that shares its data gathered from the world. So now we have a player that is able to walk around in a randomized world, collect different foods that have been randomly created and spawned in, store them in a simple inventory, but how should we now go about eating them? And why does the player even need to eat them in this game? How should hunger even work? Leaving me wondering, where should this game go now? And yes, you might be wondering, where the hell did Vitruvius go? And why is there now a random space guy walking around in his place? Well, we'll save that for a later video. This is as far as I've currently gotten on this game and this idea of turning our board game into a video game. And I'm really proud with the progress that I've made on it in the last couple of weeks, with ideas to expand the simple idea that sparked our board game into a more fully fleshed out virtual experience. The game is obviously in a very raw state, so I'm gonna need to spend some time thinking about what this core gameplay loop of this simple idea could actually be. So consider this devlog to be continued.